Good morning, everyone. I feel like saying good morning, old friends. Um, before we start with uh, presentations, we're going to do an award, um, present an award to an individual who is greatly deserving of this recognition. Um, back when I was beginning my career in mental health and employment services, I had the opportunity to go to New York City and uh, go to a program called Fountain House. Many of you in this room probably know it. It was the mother of uh, psychosocial rehabilitation programs. And I arrived there um, only to have missed Mr. Jim Schmidt, who had been their CEO. And instead, I met a woman named Mandy Funkhauser and um, another woman named Esther and totally fell in love with the approach of psychosocial rehabilitation. Then I came back to Maine and tried to help uh, start some of those programs and, you know, Arusta County, Don Chamberlain and I, learned quickly that Caribou, Maine just isn't New York City. And it presented some unusual uh, challenges, but we got it sort of done. And then, lo and behold, Jim Schmidt arrives in Maine for his retirement. And uh, in a never-ending way, appeared uh, at my door when I was working at Maine Medical Center to advocate for this program. And his advocacy has never ended. Um, Jim has been uh, extremely vocal, very involved, very engaged, and has led Maine to have probably at least uh, the Waterville program, which I'm most familiar with, and unfortunately haven't spent time with the Augusta program, but I'm sure it is a replication of the quality of the service that's delivered there and the way in which that program is done. So for all of that work and uh, all of his energy and compassion, uh, passion and commitment, we want to honor Jim Schmidt today. So I'd like to read um, a letter that was um, sent to Jim or is being presented to him um, by my, and is signed by me and Commissioner Fortman who any moment will arrive for this portion of the program. And then I'm going to give something that Jim, I understand, just lives for, which is another plaque. <laughs> um, because you know, when you're Jim's age, you just can't have enough of those things. Um, and in addition to that, we're going to present Jim with a pen, um, a very exquisite pen, I might add, um, that I used to sign the policy. We were going to do that ceremony here, but I thought you all might think that was a little much. Um, and then we're going to really tell Jim what the award is. So if I may take a moment just to read this letter to you, and then I'll come down here, because um, we're told that photo ops will be better for Jim and me there. Um, Jim, on behalf of mental health consumers, service providers, and the citizens of Maine, we are taking this opportunity to recognize your remarkable contribution to the health and welfare of those who've been challenged with mental health issues. You've been a champion for independence from your first days working with John Beard at Fountain House, pioneering innovative concepts of transitional and supported employment, supportive apartments programs, and psychosocial rehabilitation. To your retirement in Maine, where you live, where you have been instrumental in the creation of High Hopes in Waterville and the Capitol Clubhouse in Augusta. You have enjoyed the opportunity to positively impact the lives of thousands and we have had the honor to know you and to learn from you. Your conviction to always keep people with mental health issues at the forefront has become a hallmark of services for people in Maine. It is with appreciation of your priority to empower and enable others to lead the fullest of lives that we today recognize your legacy by providing sponsorships for two clubhouse members to attend the clubhouse conference and employment celebration to be held in Washington, D.C., October 2011. We provide these sponsorships knowing that Maine and the clubhouses that you have helped to create will be well represented in this national forum and your contribution will be long remembered. With deep appreciation, myself and Laura Fortman, and I would say everyone in this room. Thank you, Jim. So, okay. pen, sir. My Lord, that's, that's a pen. It's a pen. <laughs> Is it box? No. <laughs> okay. You can write us notes from that. Yeah. There's your plaque. That's lovely. That's very lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations and thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. That's it. Yeah, I'd like to say a couple of words. <laughs> It'd be a shame to stand up here and get a plaque without.
uh, bending your ear a little bit on uh, what I think the job is and what I hope you guys will do in the future. Uh, the mental health field has been criticized with some justification over the years for not uh, spending enough time focusing on what its clients can accomplish in the community, particularly vocationally. This is not a new criticism. It happened back in uh, the early 50s in New York City when clients that I knew were uh, told by their welfare worker, this was before SSI and SSDI, and the, when the minimum wage was 75 cents an hour, that uh, they're better off taking their welfare check than going to work. Uh, you know, if you fast forward to today, and you have the same issues, really, that you confront when, you, when people come up with the idea that somehow the important thing is preserving benefits rather than finding a new life, a life that's, uh, uh, where, where there's, that's productive, where you, are, where you are somebody. And one of the hopes I uh, have, have had for Maine and for uh, uh, elsewhere in the country is that we begin to look at our client, at the individuals who have come down with mental illness, as first of all, finding out that they're worth it, learning that they're worth something, they have something to offer to themselves and others, and that uh, their future can include and should include employment, not a part-time employment that just started all, but employment that moved towards <coughs> full-time full -time work, as well as open access to educational opportunities. So that's the bully pulpit, that's the, you know. So I hope wish you well in your conference, and I hope your vocational policies move the field in the direction I just uh, mentioned. Thank you all again very much, Commissioner. I appreciate the, the honor. Uh, I appreciated the work, actually, the help. The, the fact that I could, that I could find myself useful up here in Maine. <laughs> and uh, uh, so th again, once again, thanks and good luck. Thank you.